Okay, hi guys, I'm going to be a bit busy today. I'm going to make a couple of videos to uh, revisit um, what very well trodden ground, things we, we discuss all the time uh, on YouTube in this, this little cosseted section of YouTube here. Um, but I'm going to look at them from a slightly different angle. So this is going to be the first of those videos. But before I start, there's something I want to show you. I want to show you my clock. And that's clock, not cock. So don't panic, okay? Because uh, I've, I've done a feature wall, a black feature wall at the end of my study. I want you to see my clock, okay? And what do you reckon to that? I'm quite proud of that, which is why I'm showing you my clock, basically. And there, also, I don't know if you can see that there, okay? Anybody ever says to me, Jim, you're no oil painting. Well, fuck you. That's the proof that I am, okay? Um, right. I want to warn you about something. Um, it's been brought to my attention that holes are appearing outside people's front doors. About four yards, almost exactly four yards outside the front door, straight in line with the door, holes are appearing. And these are special holes because they're very difficult to see. Um, I've been quite serious about this. These are very special holes. They're quite difficult to see. But they're very deep, hundreds of feet deep. If you fall down the hole, you, you're going to break your legs, you're going to break your neck, you're probably going to die. They're not very wide, they're no wider than the doorway. You can easily, easily miss the hole just by shimmying to one side every time you leave your front door. Okay, now, now am, I, am I joking about this or am I serious? Well, it's impossible for you to tell, isn't it? You assume that I'm not serious about this, but you don't really know. Now, Pascal's wager would suggest that you're better off shimmying past this hole. The hole might not be there. Maybe you don't believe the hole is there, but the best thing that you can do is to shimmy around it anyway. You're not losing a lot by shimmying, but you stand to gain a lot by not falling down the hole, if I am being serious. Now, I'm going to do a bit of, of amateur mind reading on this now. I, I don't claim to have supernatural powers. I'm not telepathic in any kind of a way. But I'm quite good at working out what people are thinking. Okay, so the first thing I'm thinking is that you don't actually believe me on this. You don't believe this hole actually exists. The next thing I'm thinking is that you're not going to shimmy round the hole. The reason you're not going to shimmy round the hole... I know what it is. The reason you're not going to shimmy round the hole is that you're concerned that if you shimmy round that hole, you could fall down another hole right next to it. That's what it is, isn't it? Except this is where the real mind reading is going to come in. Because I know what you're thinking now. You're thinking, Jim, you're talking bullshit. The reason I'm not going to shimmy round that hole isn't because I think there's another hole next to it that I'm going to fall down. Yes, great philosophical argument, Jim, but that's not the reason I'm not going to shimmy round the hole. I'm not going to shimmy round the hole because I don't believe the hole is there. You've provided absolutely no evidence that the hole is there. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to entertain your argument. So this brings us back to, to uh, Pascal's wager, Blaise Pascal's gambit. And, and, and this idea that even if we don't believe in God, we may as well pray to him anyway. It doesn't take long. And the, and the benefits, if we happen to be wrong and he does exist, are very, very great. But looking at this hole in the ground, however deep I make the hole, however many spikes and flames I put at the bottom, you're still not going to shimmy round it because you don't believe in it. Now, the, the usual defences to Pascal's wager is this, is we say, well, look, you know, what about if we pray to a god and it's the wrong god? Well, our other god's going to be really offended. That's a great philosophical argument, isn't it? Or, or the one that, that God is omniscient, and, and he'll know that we're not genuinely praying to him, that we're just doing it out of, out of self-interest, so he'll see through our little scam, so it isn't going to work. That's a great philosophical argument, isn't it? But both these philosophical arguments, however great they are, are not the reason that we don't take Pascal up on his wager. The reason we don't take Pascal up on his wager, and I think we all have to be clear on this, is because we don't see sufficient evidence for one side of the wager to make it worthwhile. We see no more evidence for the existence of this God that's worth praying to, this personal, theistic, specific 
deity that's worth praying to than you do for this hole that I've just said is four yards outside your front door. That is the real reason we don't bother praying in the absence of any belief in God. It's nothing to do with these philosophical arguments. Well, anyway, that's my position on this. That's my take on this. That's the point of making this video, alongside the chance to show you my gorgeous clock. Um, I'd be interested to see and to hear what you think about it. Thank you for listening.